Hello everyone and welcome to another video here. Today we are actually going to be covering Dapper Duck, a Darko player here with Amir. How are you doing today, Amir? Uh, pretty good. Seeing the Dapper Duck Darko with Strider, while I presume is Tank because we're also running uh, Bitter Retribution, it's, uh, it's making my day go a bit better because this is a combo where I think we're allowed to just run forward as a tank with no care in the world and run at their carry, make sure that they're never allowed to play the game. Exactly. And I, one of the things that really excites me about covering a Darko uh, game as well as like a Dapper Duck Darko game is the fact that Darko is one of these characters that I don't think we've definitively established how to play exactly yet. We've got the tank Darkos, we've got the bruiser Darkos, we've got the uh, instant assassin pen Darkos, and all of them been seeing good performance in different roles at different times. And one of the things that really makes this Darko like really, really strong is the fact that he's tanky and he's got percentage HP damage on both um, of his two core abilities. I believe his Q and his ultimate. So he can do damage even without building damage itself. Yeah, but we did see a small nerf to him in this last patch where before his Q was 5% health or yeah, 5% max HP damage at all ranks where now it scales from one to five percent so we've been seeing a lot of darkos switch off the e max to go to a q max first and then going e second but it will be fun to see what dapper duck does we might see q into w because we're playing full tank i th i would believe so i believe it is going to be probably q into w and there's already immediately goes with the strider i i'm actually excited to see because yeah with this type of comp uh, Dapper Duck is obviously the initial frontline for the team with Eleni and Katja as um, their secondaries. But with the setup here of how like the frontline is going to work, Dapper Duck plays this this type of Darko regardless of game. So it's not necessarily just a one-off pickup here. It is also very funny to see. <laughs> we're fight we're trying to fight an Isol, but Isol has his invisibility, so it is very hard to catch him. But the second he doesn't have it up, we just press R, we follow it up with Q, he can't, he can't get away. And, and yeah, we're already seeing the prime example of why Tank Darko is a very viable option for the simple fact that we ulted and Isol died instantly. Yeah, we also badly used Strider while it was level 1, so it's still on cooldown as we are coming into the night. Always a little awkward when you use it a little too early. Yeah, but hopefully the next time it's up, it, we can look for this fight that might be in front of us. Uh, I don't know if we're chasing this team because we should see the pings, but... No, it looks yeah, like they know like that they, they know the farm's good. gone, so they're not going to bother like following Tailcoat behind a team. It's not worth losing the possible farm when you can just walk up, grab all of this farm on the bridge, which is very nice that they added... Yeah, all the farm changes actually recently have caused a lot of interesting new pathings and a lot of opportunities to be able to get a lot of different types of farm. Um, I think uh, I was talking to a few people about this before where this, like the big change to farm has kind of given the game like a new breath of life. I don't know what, but it feels more refreshing just queuing up a game, me not knowing where any of the farm is and just trying to relearn all the farm rotations. So I'd kind of like to see this change happen like once or twice a season. Oh, absolutely. I think this brings re new life into the game. 100%. We don't even know there's a fight happening right above us right now, but I yeah. agree that, yeah, it's like these changes definitely really, really help. I think we might have heard something happening. So it looks like, yeah, we walk up, find a kill and do we keep going? Do we actually find, we do find the rest of this fight. Oh, look at who it is no. on the Arda. <laughs> yeah, I noticed I was in this game and I was like, oh no, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it looks like Dapper Duck will actually be caught by the enemy Lenny, but yeah, we're gonna just kill for our, for our backline, make sure that their backline isn't actually able to play the game, queuing for almost 200 damage there. This damage that was is crazy. The damage coming out is just insane. And we have Strider up again. But we won't use it as I think we just prioritize the tree. It is the more important objective. 
for sure at this point that's definitely the the play but it, to me it's just it's just crazy to think that like dapper duck was able to just put so much pressure that entire fight and barely even got hurt no one no one wanted to hit darko but darko wanted to hit you and just took everyone's hp down the entire time yeah, and it looks like we just have more people that want to contest this. Oh, and we're going to slam what I assume is Burning Heart from our items. Yeah, so um, what are your thoughts on Burning Heart? New item in the game. I haven't seen a whole lot of usage of it, but Dapper Duck's running it in pretty much every time with Darko here. So the stats are somewhat, I don't want to say mediocre, but they're average to a bit above average of what we have on a lot of arm slots. Um, the big thing is that giving the giving the passive to an arm slot versus chest piece is very massive because of the item. Uh, I don't actually remember the real name um, because we have Giga Chat it? suit. I uh, know because we have a we have Giga Chat suit and the chest piece, which is very very strong right now. Because a lot of people didn't realize that they changed it. I don't remember when, but instead of it giving you tenacity it now gives you damage reduction which is very different than just giving you defense um so it gives you damage reduction on top of the insane amount of defense it already gives you a lot of health and it gives you a bit of attack speed slow as well so for adcs you're just a pain to kill for a lot of burst mages you're a pain to kill that item is just very strong and meaning that we can go a bit of extra damage in our arm piece with the passive from burning heart and getting the all of the stats on our chest piece it's it's just a very nice combo right no absolutely and yeah definitely one of the things that's really interesting too is that because we have the uh burning arm piece we don't actually have we not all the people are running blazing dress anymore after it's nerfed quite a few patches ago where it lost a lot of its main tanky stats so it wasn't being deemed worth enough to have that burning and the arm piece may lose one percent of its damage ticking for the burn but the fact that you can now play the stronger chest pieces like giga chad suit or uh your ghost brides it, it, it does give you that extra option also the the fight here was just so one-sided i understand it was a 2v3 but the, the two characters being luke and alex they have a lot of different ways to try and enter a fight and they weren't able to use any of them we just sat in front of darko knock them up knock them back slam them into the wall just make sure that they have no opportunity to actually get in how much do you need yeah the, lo the level of spacing that darko is able to create for kacha so that kacha is able to just play completely free without having to worry about anything well, also putting out this damage because remember we, we actually now already have um you know the giga chat suit or guardian suit already inactive activated and we're actually this gonna take also, their item yeah we saw someone buying just instantly walk up strider forward we're taking so many abilities we're tanking everything yeah wait, we're not taking any damage either what is that is crazy to think i with the Guardian suit, we're just able to tank so much with the, I think it was, as I saw, 30% damage reduction. That, like, that's a lot of damage that is just not happening, especially when you already have 140 armor on you. It's, so, it's just so strong. How much do you need? Yeah, th that, that is a prime example, and I'm pretty sure if we check here, the other Darko that was up against there is a damage, no, also building a little bit more tanky with the Crusader helmet and stuff, but... It's still like that's supposed to be percentage HP when they slammed uh, Dapper Duck into the wall. Didn't do anything. Uh, everyone was focusing Dapper Duck because Dapper Duck went back in as a uh, out of position, as like a frontline positioning, and it did not matter. It actually just created so much free space. Yeah, it just means that because we're so tanky and we're so scary, because we also deal a bit of damage, like our front, our backline is just able to play whatever game they want. It doesn't really matter because everyone will be so focused on us that it they're able to do anything we'll have to see how the rest of the game kind of plays out then because if, if it keeps playing like this it's gonna be kind of crazy i know that i'm pretty sure that dapper duck does a ton of damage this game too so this build even though building tanky is not one to scoff at yeah we also 
I'm looking to see if, uh, if Dabber Duck is going to try and find a way in. We stridered and was unable to find anything yet. But because we have Strider 3, it's back up again. Yeah, I and mean, we had to back away due to the Razi ultimate. The, the, pen, the armor penetration definitely is going to make him less tanky. Yep. Oh, and we're pulling back the Camillo. He's just one shot off of that. This fight is already won. Able to find the E onto the Razi, and I think we're just going to give up the Camillo. And yeah, there's the Strider. The it's over. Instant dead. Strider 3 giving a 15 second cooldown to this ability, it, it is just, it, it's so strong. We strider at the beginning of the fight, we take one down, we strider again in the middle of the fight. And then we finish it off with a strider. And also, if we talk about what Dapper did there, that was such an incredible kind of play and the really good utilization of that ultimate, you know, engaging onto the back line, putting a ton of pressure to the back line, and then immediately bringing the Camillo towards his team so his team can 1v3 now that the back line has been disrupted and like pushed backwards from in the initial engaging from uh, Dapper Doc. Yeah, it is very nice because I think one of the huge things that most people won't notice is that Dapper Duck forced a 2v, uh, 2v1 on both sides. Dapper Duck going forward, 2v1 the Lenny Rossi, and then forcing the Camillo to be separated so that uh, his Katja Lenny were able to 2v1 the other side of the fight. And just the second that Camillo wants to go back to 3v3ing, say no. Exactly, and then brought them right back into the fight. And it looks like we will just be following the Rossi. I assume we're waiting for our Strider to come back up, getting a bit of vision. But yeah, it looks like we will stop for a bit, but it looks like they actually want to fight. <laughs> yeah, and Lenny's trying to go in for the catch. Doesn't get it, but it doesn't matter because Camilla goes too far. And it, this might be the um, the best way to utilize him as a tank when it comes to having double backline is just simply taking out a target and saying, hey guys, I want you guys to focus this. It sort of feels like... Um, that ultimate disruption is really good at isolating one person. It makes me really think of uh, characters that have really good zoning tools that can easily turn a fight into a 1v3 for a few moments. Yeah, for me, the way that Dapper Duck has been using ult this game reminds me of characters in League, such as Alzahar, where instead of us using our ult and like trying to just use it to look for an instant kill, we're actually using it to deny an opponent the ability to play the game like this camillo now twice has tried to do something and we just ult them and say no you're not allowed to play the game both of my teammates are hitting you now and once you come out and my ultimate starts to deal damage when we land he's also going to take a lot of damage from that so i think at least with playing tank darko we're a lot more utility but be, like even though we're utility it doesn't mean we have no damage because of all the percent health damage that we have in our kit exactly plus also the longer we're staying in the middle of the fight we're utilizing the the new item right the burning heart so we're constantly just always emitting damage as well yeah and then also when we're ulting when we're eing like a lot of our abilities want us to be right on top of our opponent burning heart might be one of darko's best in slot arm pieces that's what I want to hear. I want to find the best in slots for Burning Heart. Like, I mean, looking at this gameplay makes me really just want to try every tank with Burning Heart Giga Chad suit and just see which ones work <laughs> because it just, it feels so strong right now watching it on Darko. I mean, surely it can work on other things. Yep. Time to lock in Burning Heart Giga Chad suit Camillo. Heck yeah. I mean, actually, My that feels thing. like, that does feel like a build I'd see something like Pie Bob or someone run. Um, yeah. If, if you really need the extra tank stats or the extra utility, also, it looks like we're getting bought an item by our Lenny. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, if you need the extra tank stats or the utility on a character like Camillo, it might be able to work as long as your team comp is building around it. So, how much for sure. And also, we did see there um, Darko bought for Kacha, and then it looks like Lenny bought for Darko. So it's kind of been credit sharing left and right. Yeah. Making this team game actually seem like a team game, making sure that everyone is giving up items for for the person that needs it at the time of the game. Which is interesting, I think, because technically uh, Dapper Duck did prioritize himself first on two of his core items, making sure 
to get his arm and chest piece before Kacha even got an item. So Kacha, Kacha was actually a lower priority than, than Dapper Duck when it came to um, getting Darko geared up, which can kind of make sense. I mean, Darko was allowed to make a lot of those plays because he had that early tankiness to be able to just run in, not have to worry about his HP pool and create a bunch of space. Oh, we're also seeing a lot of damage come out off of a single Lenny pullback. And yeah, we just, Lenny's actually doing so much work this fight, being able to pull people back. And then Dark is just walking forward and denying the other two the ability to play the game. Uh, and, and also just like no damage yeah lenny lenny has also been able to play the exact same role as darko in this game where it's just constantly been put take someone put them out of position everyone focus the person in a position uh actually even helping darko be able to get a little bit more cleaner all to pulling people right back in honestly a comp style such as this might be one of darko's favorite because he's he doesn't have to play such an insanely tanky role because he still has the support that can give him the heals and he doesn't have to play such a like defensive role either because Lenny's able to peel for or sorry my brain is blanking right now Kacha. for the Kacha yeah yeah so we're allowed to kind of just walk up deny space and then if we start getting low we walk back get the Lenny heals so I think give, giving Darko a comp where he's able to just run around and like play his own game while the rest of his team can play their own game it just it looks so well exactly and, it, I, and i think dapper dapper is really utilizing that fact that he can be this flexible and he you know because he initiates first goes in deep then immediately backs off goes into a more passive play yep such as here where our lenny's able to catch the alex out and then we're just looking to start taking the fight from there Yeah, and you can keep seeing Darko's looking to try and get onto the Bernice every time the Bernice walks up and like put the pressure on him. But yeah, it just shuts him out of the fight completely. Yep, and then we actually don't know about the third party that's possibly coming around the corner. But yeah, it looks like we have the Darko coming back up. I don't know if we'll be able to find the Luke that's running all the way up to maybe try and escape it's um, possible we have a can... lot of rats this game now it's a bunch of rats and uh one uh, team team five and team eight left so we'll have to see how it kind yeah. of plays out it seems like we have been murdering the entire lobby getting 19 team kills 17 field kills this is this is such a it's somewhat of a master class on how to play darko with this kind of comp where you're playing Bruiser support and ADC. And there's the Strider. He's just unable to catch, or he's unable to get away. The ult landing, oh, just around 400-ish damage for free while we're playing full tank. Yeah, exactly. And that's I think that's the craziest part, is that this is this is full tank. And he got the blood, too. <laughs> he's, he's got the blood yeah. here. Like, while we're playing full tank, it's not like we're dealing no damage. We're still able to, to start pumping insane amounts of damage. Well, to real to really like sink this in darko this game did twenty eight thousand damage uh kacha doing thirty eight thousand and and lenny doing eighteen thousand so yeah there's a lot of kills but that's a ton of damage for someone building full tank and holes purpose is just to create space for the team and like i really don't think that this kacha has ever once been in any danger We've had Lenny being able to deny, and the space that Darko creates by walking forward is so insane. And because we also have Strider, we can walk so far forward. Well, exactly. And plus, I think I think one of the best parts about the fact that Darko can walk so far forward is that it's not even a bad thing if Darko striders in, dashes forward into, into the whole team. Because if things start looking bad at any point in time, Darko can alt backwards and pull that team back like back to his team and keep himself safe while also isolating a target to kill yeah i think with darko play styles as we were talking at the beginning of the game where he has the play style of an assassin if you're building full pen or the bruiser or full tank my favorite still has to be full tank for this reason where your utility is so high and the damage coming out here we're just able to double knock up double knock back we're just 
keeping the other Darko on us and dealing so much more damage than him while we're playing full tank. And then, yeah, we're just walking back to our team, make sure that they don't die. Stride her again. We might have Strider three times this three times this fight if the ISIL comes back to us. And it looks like he will, because this is the final team. Oh, what? Oh no! Wait. <laughs> wait, um, what just wait a second. <laughs> I mean, that is a one game, but that I have never seen that interaction yet. <laughs> that was an interesting interaction. Yeah, no, I definitely incredible display from Dapper Duck here. Really kind of shows one way that you can play Darko. We'll definitely have to probably take a look and see some of the other videos of uh, other players because there are two different ways to play Darko. This is just one of them, but this is from a prime example of one of the best Darkos currently in NA. And we'll see you in the next one.